Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, John Reagan here, founder of uh, e-powersport.com. And the reason I wanna to talk to you today is about a few things. I haven't done a coffee chat in a bit and I realized I've been failing you guys in that respect. Um, Mondays are my day off from the shop. Day off. <laughs> Like that exists. <laughs> anyway, um, you can see I'm actually here in my wife's uh, home studio for her crystal business. She has some amazing stuff here. She does some incredible crafts you can see back there. She's handmade all of those. I've watched her make them. So many hours of love and attention go into those. That's incredible. Um, yeah, she's, she's crafty, she's handy. She's crafty. Uh, but that's, that is not uh, why I'm here in here today to talk with you guys. Um, as you can see, I got my Serious Gourmet Shit shirt on because we're going to talk about some Serious Gourmet Shit. And if you keep seeing me look over, it's because these crystals do just grab your attention, don't they? They're just all pretty. So. Anyway, uh, more to the point, I wanted to go over some things I've been seeing in the industry lately. Uh, trikes. Wow. People coming out with trikes. This is an interesting area. Um, I'm just going to say it real quick. Electric. Nailed it. Rad power. Whiffed it. Uh, just right there on the trike summation. We're done. As just nail it right there. <laughs> so yeah, I have to give it to electric. They came out with a trike. Uh, they're actually using an interesting setup on a hub motor as a drive, uh, more like a uh, axle drive motor, which is something we have been toying with as well. And internally, we've been discussing it and looking at designs on how we can do it. And uh, my partner said he's even done it before already. So it was interesting to see that uh, come out in that sense. And the pricing is great. $14.99 for that, for their trike versus the $24.99 for the um, Rad Power one. Yeah, they just, good job guys, Electric nailed it. Um, I still think you can come cheaper on your other bikes though. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, to the point, what I wanna get to on this stuff today in this chat is that uh, first of all, I've been seeing a lot more of the gas and ice riders, the stunt riders and stuff, getting on Surons. And though I think this is a wonderful, wonderful thing, I think it's a great thing for the electric community. I think it really helps promote everything electric. Um, the problem I have with it is the knowledge that is being shared isn't correct. Um, it's actually very much could get you as a as a customer <laughs> in a lot of trouble with your local municipality and your local metro PDs. Um, so the reason I bring that up is because I watched this, you know, over the years. I've seen a lot of the growth that's developed and how it's developed. I'm, I used to do corporate analysis for giant, multi-trillion, billion-dollar companies. Um, <laughs> <but> <laughs> The funny thing is when I, I look at it, um, the biggest problem I see is that a lot of these influencers and stuff go riding on these bikes and then they tell you it's an e-bike. So the first thing I want to get out of the way right now, here and now, you need to understand, and this is a definitive, this is a definitive fact, Surons are not, not, capital N-O-T, e-bikes. They are not electric bicycles okay now granted in some parts of the country in some states their laws aren't as developed as some other states um somebody in delaware told me they could pretty much get anything marked as an electric moped and be good to go <laughs> so it's like oh that's interesting um but in most states they do follow a e-bike e-moped or and uh, or e-scooter depending on how they define it there's a class there and uh sorry my 8 a.m alarm um and e-motorcycle classification right and the problem i have is a lot of these uh these people that are getting on these surrounds i feel like they're getting bad information from the people that are giving them the surrounds to ride um and i'd really hate to see them as an influencer of all of you get in trouble right because they provided bad or incorrect Right, they provided incorrect uh, information to you, which then persuaded your purchase, which then you got your, you got a ticket and you got your uh, bike impounded and you're going to court now. So, so let's start with that. So first of all, why John? Why are Surons not e-bikes? Why does everybody say it's an e-bike? Well, because it's made with some bike parts, right? And 
That's also why most Surans will not be able to be VINned, is because they do not come with DOT approved parts. Our motorcycles have VIN numbers, they come with DOT approved parts. Some of them, like the VMX-12, are considered a off-road only bike. They don't have the DOT approved parts, they're designed to be used off-road, and man, the, even though they, the VMX-12 doesn't have DOT parts, it's got everything on it already, except for tail and turn signals. Um, so the first classification point that you have to look at is, does it come with pedals from the factory? If it comes with pedals from the factory, there's a really high likelihood you could classify this as an electric bicycle according to federal law, right? <laughs> Keep that in mind. And then all the other states and stuff also look at it similarly. Pardon me. Whereas if it doesn't have pedals, strike one, you're not, a, you're not an e-bike, you're not an electric bike. And Surons do not come from the factory with pedals. They're add-on kits, which are, in my opinion, a complete waste. They're just a disguise because you actually can't pedal them with the shit. It takes forever. It's horrible because you have the little gear up front, big gear in back. That's not how it works. Um, but it it also makes it so that you're you know you're making an attempt to dupe the law, right? In that sense, you're adding this modification, and that's why they classify it as from the factory. Um, some of the bikes we have are high powered with pedals from the factory, right? So just by that initial criteria, some of the ones that we sell would be considered e-bikes, electric bicycles, by that first base criteria, whereas a Suron, eh, you're already striked out, right? And this is in most states, okay? Again, that's a federal law, and then most states follow down from there. So what does classify something then as an electric bicycle power-wise, okay? That's really what happens here is they begin to look at the amount of power or horsepower the motor generates and based off that it moves up the classification system, okay? So first with an e-bike, okay? Anything with less than 750 watts, right? Technically 750 watts is like the sweet spot because you don't always get 750 watts to the wheel, blah, blah, blah. But that is one horsepower. Okay, and putting that on a bicycle makes it an e-bike. Anything with 750 watts or less in the majority of places in our country, the United States, qualifies that as an electric bicycle. Okay, you're then uh, adherent to the laws of your local municipality as to how you ride that, how you use that. No, it is not allowed to be in every place, all right? There are some places in your area where you may not be allowed to ride your electric bicycle versus a regular bicycle. There is a difference, okay? You need to look and see what that difference is, okay? Some places will allow you to ride, ride an electric bike on trails with other bicycles if it's no throttle, okay? Which, again, goes into the classifications of the e-bike, which has three classifications of its own. So you have class one, no throttle, low power, class two, throttle, mid power, class three, throttle, high power, okay? pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. And that's in most states, that's in most areas. So look up your local laws, might be a little different. Um, like I said, Delaware seemed to have some interesting stuff around there. <laughs> so um, it could just be different for you, it could be lighter, but most places have addressed these things already, okay? So e-bikes, 750 watts of power or less. And I'm gonna see if I'm gonna put little the readers up on one of these sides here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> right um it's uh 750 watts or less and three classifications whether it does pedal assist only whether it does throttle to a mid level of power or throttle to a higher level of power okay that's class one class two class three so then we move into scooters and mopeds and now some when it comes to kick scooters the ones you stand up on as a kid and kick it you know to go um those laws vary wildly. I mean, some places say there's no regulation. Some places like here in Nevada say you are not to have a motorized kick scooter on streets. It's just not, it's not legal, but we do it, right? Everybody does it. And a big part of that is because, you know, the cops are, you're just tooling around. You're not being a nuisance. So the police have better things to deal with, right? Bigger things to deal with, I should say. Um, which then brings me to the case of some of our e-bikes. Uh, some of our, well, our Enduros, let's just say it, come with uh, high-powered motors. And those motor classifications would put them in the 
uh, actually in the electric motorcycle range. However, discussing with some police officers, I found that because it has pedals, again, because it does come with pedals from the factory, they will default to e-bike laws in their mind and how they regulate it. So eventually that'll that'll stretch, that'll become more uh, locked down. But right now, that is how a lot of the uh, uh, on the ground forces say on the ground officers are looking at it um, so again you look at when it comes to a Suron no pedals high high power right obviously eclipses that 750 watt <laughs> e-bike rating <laughs> so does that make it a scooter or an electric moped well no um, most electric moped laws uh, begin at after that 750 watt power range and move up to 1500 watts or two horsepower depending on the state you're in so on and so forth but that is the majority classification for those um, the other thing you'll find is that uh, with some states they require mopeds to have pedals again it's a really odd thing <laughs> and some of them don't scooters again get classified differently whether they are sit down or kick scooters kick scooters Again, wide open. Your state could say they have heavy regulation on it. Your state could say they don't. But sit down scooters, because of the amount of gas scooters that are out there, do have some general regulations to them. Uh, you do have to, in some states, get them registered, just like you would a motorcycle or a car, right? They're classified as a motorized vehicle. And so check your local laws on those. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find anything up to about 1500 to two kilowatts of power. Some I've seen some states stated as two kilowatts um, will be classified as an electric scooter. You will be required to go get registration, liability insurance, you will be required to wear a helmet, all those kinds of things, okay? Um, again, Suron tends to meet that, but because it doesn't have DOT equipment, right that would be used that would be applied to a scooter that has a vin number that you can register um the odds are it won't qualify um so strike two um then we get into the electric motorcycle category all right now these electric motorcycles we sell these uh we sell them in single speed we sell them in four speed we sell them with regen we sell them full size we sell them small size mid size <laughs> we, you know, we're gonna make them custom ones right now um those are just straight up what they say. They are electric motorcycles. And this is the most likely classification for your Suron. Your Suron, even when you buy it, even though you buy it at a bike shop, is technically an electric motorcycle. It doesn't fall under any of the three e-bike classes. It's way overpowered for that, okay? Even though it has bicycle parts on it instead of the DOT parts that would allow you to classify it as a moped, or an actual electric motorcycle with a VIN number that you could register, get insurance on, and so forth. So where does that really place your Suron? Your Suron is a electric off-road motorcycle, okay? All the Surons, except for the newest one coming out, which is DOT approved and registerable, are essentially illegal on the street. All right, that's the reality of it. So no matter how it's sold to you, no matter, <laughs> No matter what somebody tells you, your buddies, ah, I ride around all the time. Technically, it is illegal on the street. It doesn't have the qualifying pedals that most police officers would just discount it for and, and not even bother with it for. And further, if they do take it and they do qualify the motor as its power rating, you could get dings against your license. You could get dings against your insurance. You could get lots of times in court and fines and your bike impounded you won't have that bike for quite a while so keep that in mind all right electric motorcycles are usually anything over 1500 to 2000 kilowatts um, they have dot approved equipment and that includes rims and tires that includes brakes uh, shocks lights um, all kinds of little bits and pieces that the DOT has a document that says these are the parts we're putting on it. They have all been DOT approved previously. Therefore, this bike is DOT approved. So that's how DOT approval works in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. Um, <laughs> so Suron is doing this with one of their bikes, which means it'll probably be a trim down in power, right? Based off the equipment that it has on it. Um, wouldn't be surprising to me at all. Uh, so what you really need to look at when you're buying these bikes is one, 
Um, yeah, you might see somebody online riding it around their town, doing wheelies, and the cops aren't messing with them, they're having a great time, and that's wonderful, but is it technically legal, okay? I don't want, as a store owner, I don't want any of you getting in trouble because I sold you a bike and I said, yeah, you can ride on the street. And then you come back to me a month later, go, dude, I got pulled over, my bike got impounded. I'm out $4,000, $5,000, Because really on the Surons, when it starts with it, I watched the guy's video, you, uh, you start with it at 4,000 or 4,500, then you put a few hundred in, then you put a thousand in, then you put 3,000 in, before you know it, you're into it for 10 grand. I'm like, 10 grand, you can buy a real bike. So, <laughs> that already has all that stuff and is actually DOT approved and you can ride it on the street legitimately. So just understand that this is not a bash. I'm not bashing Surons at all. What I am doing is I'm trying to educate you all so that you don't go out and buy a Suron thinking you've got a street legal bike now. Because unless you buy their VIND, their newest one, which is coming out, which is VIND and everything, your bike is not street legal. You are skirting the law in almost, well, let's just say the majority of states. And uh, yeah, you are opening yourself up to having it, to tickets, to having it impounded, and then having dings against your license and your insurance. So I just keep that stuff in mind, right? Electric motorcycles, 1500 to two kilowatts, depending on your location and up, right? They need to have DOT approved equipment on them. They need to have a VIN number so that you can register it and pay insurance on it. Mopeds, electric mopeds, most places are going to be the same thing. It's going to be above 750 watts. It's going to be up to about 1500 to two kilowatts, and it's going to require you to register it, get insurance and wear appropriate equipment. E-bikes, 750 watts and below, right? These qualify for your recreational riding, most street riding, no insurance required, wear a bicycle helmet, though I, I would highly recommend getting a DOT helmet because of the higher speed rating, because you'll be going faster. Um, yeah, anything 750 watts below, uh, has three classifications of its own. I don't want to get deep into that stuff. I just want people to understand that just because you see somebody doing it online, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good for you and work that way for you all right um man the other thing i see a lot of is uh and i i warn parents of this when they come in and buy a, a bike is you know these aren't for kids the electric bike laws say 16 and up i mean you're basically like driver age and above right i mean i, I would for some kids get into the 14 15 year old range depending on maturity and stuff like that but uh, even so, it's, I, I've had parents come back to me and say, oh, I let my 10 year old ride it and they wrecked. I'm like, oh my God, why would you do that? You know, but that's what they do. You know, I explain the laws to them and they're like, oh, and so, you know, they make adjustments, but you know, you can't control what people do after you sold them something. So that's, that's not really on anyone except for the users. But do understand that, yeah, federal law is basically basically says that electric bikes, because they're motorized, 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 because they're motorized, uh, they do require that age and that level of maturity in order to operate them safely on the road. So, uh, just a little bit of stuff there, you know. It's not that again, it's not that I'm bashing surrounds at all. I think surrounds are great for use cases in that area. But I think that the market is changing so much now that they're not the only game in town. And you can actually get things that will meet your overall needs of being able to ride on the street, to ride in the dirt, to have insurance, um, you know, be covered if you get hit by a car. Cause you know, let's face it, if you're riding an illegal bike in the street, the odds of your insurance or that person's insurance is gonna cover anything for you is gonna be almost not, I mean, zero. They'll be like, oh, well, you shouldn't have been on the road in the first place. Bye. <laughs> your car case, <laughs> kaput. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna sue you for my client's vehicle because you shouldn't have been on the road. So really, really keep those things in mind, all right? Um, I know Surround's coming up with some great stuff. They have some great products. Uh, but understand what your laws are, understand what you take into your own hands. And in this case, it's your $4,000 to $10,000 
uh, little vehicle that you've, you've invested time and love and money into. So, I mean, if you're willing to risk that, then more power to you. Um, I like to, you know, try and stay on the side of legit enough to not have to go to jail um, or have my stuff impounded. I really enjoy having these things for transportation. I, I don't want them to, to be taken away. So that's it. I mean, if you're a, uh, an influencer, somebody watching this and you did a thing on Surons and blah, 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 blah. And I know Sir Monster rides this shit all over, but yeah, we've already talked about that. So it's still, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Let's put it that way. I hate using that phrase, but you know, I just want you all to be aware that yes, you could end up using your Suron in the wrong place and get a ticket, uh, or even worse, have it impounded, get a ticket and have to go to court. So keep those things in mind when you're riding your bikes, right? Um, and, you know, ride safely with each other, you know, keep yourself in, in good position. Don't try it, you know, get too close, knock each other out. That's usually what happens anyway. But that's my, uh, my morning chat, my morning rant. And uh, yeah, I think I'll be titling this one, Surrounds are not e-bikes exclamation all caps yelling and screaming <laughs> it's just again i the 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 problem with an industry when not a lot of people understand the legalities of it is uh your average consumer sees what people are telling them and then they see what the laws are and then they get confused or they don't want to adopt it until things are clearer so i just want to make things clear all right in order for something to qualify as an electric bike, it needs to first have pedals, it needs to second meet one of the three power criteria, right, under 750 watts. For it to be a moped, you're talking 50, seven, above 750 watts, up to 1500, in some places 2000 watts. Again, covered with DOT uh, approved items that allow it to be uh, vinned and registered. Same with electric motorcycle. It comes in at 1500 watts to 2000 watts and above, uh, it needs to have DOT equipment, things to be on the street. It needs to have a VIN, needs to be registrable and insurable to be driven on, on public roads. So just keep that stuff in mind, you know? And if you're looking at getting your 12 year old a Suron, just don't. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're a parent, you do what you wanna do. I don't hold you to it, I mean, if you came into my shop as soon as you said they were 12, I'd, I'd give you my spiel. I'd be like, I'm selling it to you. Uh, what you do with it once it's in your garage is your business. Um, I would say keep them off the streets, so on and so forth. But yeah, I have to have at least my uh, my release of liability, right? Because as a shop, and some of these, these influencers own shops too, and that's something you should really consider is your liability um, in selling and promoting the item, right? Especially if you don't do it correctly and you don't give people the proper information. That creates a liability on your part. And so you should just really think about that. Um, if you're doing the, the Suron stuff, make sure you get your disclaimers, make sure you put up all your little da 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 da, change you, legalese, as they call it. And uh, yeah, just make sure you're safe out there, kids. Right? Watch out for each other and uh, spread love and knowledge, not promote fake news.